Hello, my name is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2013 Essentials, and this is the additional exercise for Chapter 11. So, as you know, in Chapter 11 we've been talking about section styles, section view styles, and annotation. So, we're going to do a little bit more of that in this additional exercise, and we're going to address some, some things with the Madison Lane section views. So um, our first task is actually uh, broken into five parts. So we want to get into the section views and the section view group and the sections for Madison Lane and apply some changes to their appearance. So I'm going to come down here in this particular file. This is where the sections and sheets are located for Madison Lane. And the first part of the first task is to arrange the section views using the bottom up left to right with grid group plot style. A lot of the things that we're going to do in this first task, in fact I think all of them, are going to be handled within one command. So I'm going to click on a section view to bring up my contextual ribbon. I'm going to go to view group properties and I think everything we need to do, all five sub parts of this task, are going to be done in this view group properties command. The first one is to change the group plot style. And we'll find that right on the section views tab of this dialog box. You can see the column here. So I'll click that. And we want to do bottom up left to right with grid. That's our group plot style. So let's kind of do these one at a time and click OK after each one. So there we see the bottom up left to right with grid. Um, it went ahead and updated the layout automatically and you can see that now everything fits on one sheet so that's pretty cool the other change we want to make is uh, the section view itself so let me go back to view group properties and on the sections tab actually I want to go back to section views again and we're looking at the style column here now this first row works the same way if I if I change this first value it changes everything beneath then I can also go to the individual values for different section views and change them, kind of like an override. I want to do all of them. So where it says road section now, I want to change that to design 1V, no grid. And if you remember from earlier, 1V means uh, a vertical exaggeration of 1, which is no vertical exaggeration. All right, so we'll click OK. That's going to change the appearance of the section views a little bit. Click OK again. And you can see it takes away the grid as it should because the grid is contained within the sheet. The next change we need to do is take away the bands. So again, now here because my grid is gone, I have to click on the outline of the section view to, to select it. So I'll go back to view group properties and where it says band set, I'll click the uh, ellipsis button there. And as it is right now, there are no bands, but just to, just to complete the uh, exercise the way it's laid out, I'm going to import the no bands band set. But really there are already no bands there. So uh, that step is actually already taken care of. Next we want to apply a label set for the rock. So again I'll click the section view, go to view group properties, and this time I'll go to the sections tab because I want to do something with an individual section across all of the section views. I'll find the line labeled rock and go to edit labels and we've got a label set called rock that will uh, add some labels to show the, the depth of rock or the elevation of the rock at uh, various locations along the section. Finally we want to take this appearance of the corridor section and change it to the presentation code set style which if I remember correctly has some hatching in it and some things like that. So again we'll go to view group properties and I'll go to my sections tab. There's my Madison Lane corridor and I want to change the style to presentation. And there you can see the change. I've got the little bit of hatching. We've got the uh, the line work drawn. I think this might have some line weight associated with it. So I'll turn on the line weight feature and we can see the heavy line across the top, the green line indicating the, the grass strip, and so on. All right, so that satisfies all of the requirements for task number one.
Task number two is pretty easy. It just simply says to update the group layout after you've made the preceding changes. Now we've been clicking OK after each change, so I think a lot of what uh, we've been doing has already been updated. But just to be sure, I'm going to click one of the section views in the group and then go up here to update group layout. So let's see if any changes take place. Yeah, there was some change there. It was able to compress them down a little bit, probably because um, of a change to the, the section view style or the labeling that we used. But in any case, we we're able to fit some more sections into a smaller area. So that takes care of the second task for this exercise. For the final task, we want to call out the change in the cross section that results from the bus pull off. So let me go back to plan view. And if you recall, we have this little area right here for buses to pull off and uh, let, let school children off or pick them up or what have you. And what we want to do is, is call attention to that in the section views to let the contractor know that there's a change in the road geometry and to provide some details so that the contractor can build it properly. And we can see by the sample lines that there are two sections that actually show this change, 2 plus 50 and 3 plus 0, 0. 3 plus 50 is beyond the change, 200 is before it, so we've got those two section views that are affected. So if we zoom into 2 plus 50, for example, we notice that the right side is a little bit wider. Right? So we want to call attention to that and we want to give specific geometric information about where exactly that is. So what I'm going to do is call up my add labels command and I'm going to label a, a uh, section view and I'd like to do an offset elevation label. These styles look good so I'll use those. I'll click add, select my section view. Remember the grid is not part of the section view, it's part of the sheet so I have to click the edge here and then where it says to pick a point, I'm going to snap to the end point right here on the section itself. And that's going to pop a label in there. Now to make it a little easier to look at, I'm going to drag the label off, take advantage of its drag state. And here we can see that the uh, edge of the pavement is nine, uh, not nine and a half, but um, seven and a half feet off of what it normally is. The lane widths are typically 12 feet. It's 19.5 feet wide in this area because again we're widening for the bus pull off. So let's do the same thing for station 3 plus 0, 0. I'll click add once again, select the section view, snap to the edge of pavement, drag that off to the side, and now you can see that we actually are at an additional 12 feet off. So that pull off is a full 12 feet in width plus the 12 feet of the lane itself which gives us an offset of 24 feet. Plus we're sloping down at 2 percent which is going to drop the elevation of that edge to 191.02, 191.46 in this case. So we've called attention to that change in the road geometry. We've given the contractor or the reviewer additional information about how to construct that part of the road. And that satisfies our third task, and that's the end of the additional exercise for Chapter 11.